This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freaking.com. I think we can all agree that we share a belief. It was a fairly bad president, but maybe we can also agree that a broken clock can be right at the decisive moment. 1978 was roughly America's low point, but I believe it was that year that Jimmy Carter appointed Paul Volcker to run the Federal Reserve. This good decision, you could say, may have undone all the bad ones that he made, or at least ultimately overshadowed them. Now, sir, if you're Obama Biden's staff, are you complicit for the torture of Bradley Manning? I don't think Obama has done anything like this with this yelling business. She's awful. But the current federal approach toward Bitcoin may be the load lightning that saves the camel's back. Or maybe just freeze dries the camel for another 30 years. If currency policy really is the root of the tree, I wonder if federal Bitcoin tolerance could be the most important federal development during the Obama administration. Now, of course, I'm operating <laughs> with a sort of a low... I mean, I didn't expect that the federals would be as tolerant of Bitcoin as they are. They're not that tolerant, but if you compare them to the Chinese or the Russians, I would have thought that both governments would have been more tolerant of Bitcoin than the feds are being. And yet the feds are basically just taking an approach of uh, picking and choosing occasional targets, high profile. They're not really speaking out that much against Bitcoin or uh, demanding that average users avoid it. The fact that the Postal Service is starting to get on the bandwagon is probably an indicator that they've gotten the nod from somewhere higher up. Now, is this just a show? Uh, the same way that the government has made a show of, of uh, 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 cooling off on marijuana, but then proceeded to arrest all kinds of people and steal their stuff. I don't know, but this, this apparent relative Bitcoin tolerance uh, added to the fact that the authorities now seem to be uh, moving toward actually reducing the military and getting out of some of these foreign countries. I think it's a vindication of, uh, of those of us who felt that Obama would be a better uh, person to have in the White House they have one more to Nick? than oh. Romney. <laughs> there are many, many things I've thought that have been wrong, but I don't think that was one of them. The administration is perceived as ineffective. It's not being able to get much done right now. It's disliked by the people. And it's starting to yield to the laws of physics. Maybe I should just say the laws of nature. That tends to be about the best you can get out of a federal administration these days. So as many reasons as I have to oppose the Obamaites, and I do basically, uh, I, I'm, I, we have to look at what the alternatives are. Ask ourselves if what we've got now may actually be one of the less bad scenarios. Well, and there's also the fact that whatever people don't like about the administration, they seem to blame a little bit on socialism. Not all of them, of course, but again, if we had a Republican administration in and they were doing the exact same thing as Obama, it would all be blamed on you know, capitalism or free market. Uh, this way, with him in office, the problems that, that are perceived by the public kind of are the actual problems. Things might get better if we had some sort of Rand Paul type presidency, but uh, for now I'm thinking we've got a little bit of a perfect storm on our hands. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freaking.com.